And now we begin the fourth and final section of 17, chapter 17, the atmosphere. This is 17.4, human impact on the atmosphere. Vocabulary terms, air pollutant, temperature inversion. Make sure you have those in your lab notebook. And if you have not skimmed through the section yet, please do so before you begin. Now we'd like to start section 17.4 with a key idea. Human activities affect the atmosphere by producing air pollutants and other substances that contribute to problems such as acid rain and ozone depletion. There are two objectives for this section. Discuss how human impacts can affect the atmosphere. Compare and contrast acid rain, smog, ozone depletion, and global warming. An air pollutant is any airborne gas or particle that occurs at a concentration capable of harming humans or the environment. The Environmental Protection Agency monitors levels of air pollutants and establishes regulations aimed at reducing pollution. Now in the United States, the Clean Air Act of 1970 identified six key pollutants as indicators of air quality. Listed on the left of this table are the common air pollutants of the Clean Air Act of 1970. The major sources for carbon monoxide include automobile exhaust, some of the effects reduces delivery of oxygen to body tissues, impairs vision and reflexes. Nitrogen dioxide, major source is burning of fossil fuels and power plants and automobiles. You have some effects, irritates lungs and lowers resistance to respiratory infections, contributes to acid rain and smog. Major source of sulfur dioxide, burning of fossil fuels and power plants, oil refineries, paper mills and volcanoes. Some effects irritates respiratory systems, contributes to acid rain. Particulates, such as dust, smoke, soot, and ash. Major sources include factories, paper mills, oil, refineries, power plants, and volcanoes. This contributes to respiratory problems linked to some cancers. Lead, major source, is smelters, battery plants. Some effects damages nervous and digestive systems. Now the ozone, O3, major source, reactions of nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons in the presence of sunlight in the stratosphere as we learned from before. Some effects are reduces lung function and causes inflammation. Now locally, pollution can have an effect in, on individuals by limiting their outdoor activity and causing health problems. On a global level, pollution contributes to several er environmental problems, included as including acid rain and the depletion of the ozone layer. Now people have become more aware of the dangers of the air pollution and the establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency helps monitor levels of air pollution and establishes regulations aimed at reducing those, this pollution. So does air pollution affect only humans? What do you think? No. All living things. There are more active conservation efforts than ever before. Some of those include recycling, and limiting their use of fossil fuels. Now, how might air pollution affect living and non-living parts of the environment? It kills living things and destroys wildlife habitats. Damages the atmosphere, bodies of water, buildings, structures made of marble or limestone. One example of this, it's a cultural monument and it has been damaged by acid rain, such as the Parthenon in Greece, and they're very, very expensive to restore and sometimes permanently damaged. Now some of the other harmful effects have damaged regional tree populations, just like the spruce trees found in the Appalachian Mountain ranges of the eastern United States. Pollutants can react with water vapor to form acid rain. It could also be in the form of precipitation or snow. They can, pollutants can also be trapped by temperature inversions to cause thick smog, it could also, pollutants can also reduce the amount of ozone in the ozone layer, and pollutants can contribute to global warming. Now, acid rain is based on an acidity measured using pH. The scale to the right shows how the pH of acid rain compares with the pH of some common substances. You see how rain is naturally slightly acidic with a pH just under 6, but pollution has significantly increased the acidity of rain in some areas. On the pH scale, a reading from 7 to 0, 
each whole number represents a tenfold change in acidity. So a 5 is 10 times greater than a 6, 4 is 100 times greater than a 6. Than a six. Now, acid precipitation can, be harm, can harm both plants and animals. Life forms can survive only within a limited range of pH. Acid rain can lower the pH beyond that range. Now, this is noticeable in lakes and streams throughout the United States and Canada where many fish populations have died out due to the increase in acidity. Forests can be stripped away of vital nutrients such as the ones in the Appalachian Mountain Range. A temperature inversion is an increase in temperature with an increase in altitude. This is uncommon and occurs when a layer of cold air is trapped beneath a layer of warm air. On the left you have no inversion near the surface. On the right you can see an inversion near the surface. Now the term smog was coined in the early 1900s to refer to the smoky fog in London, which resulted from emissions of particulate matter and other pollutants from factories. Now today smog is used to refer to the photochemical smog, a brown haze that forms in air polluted with nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons that come mainly from automobile exhausts. Now ozone also stunts the growth of plants by in interfering with photosynthesis. As a result, the ozone and smog can reduce crop yields and hurt agricultural industry. Now, the severity of smog depends on atmospheric con conditions. Usually, convection mixes warm air with from near Earth's surface with the cooler air above, so it dilutes any pollutants. But it can be trapped in a temperature inversion, and in this situation, the trapping of those pollutants close to the ground and allows smog to build to dangerous levels. A global warming data has indicated a one degree Celsius per year increase since the late 1800s. Now this could be due to natural cycle or human activities. Possible effects include rising sea levels, increasing frequency of severe weather, and relocation of major crop growing areas. Now this increase in global warming is due primarily to what researchers think the CO2 levels from the burning of fossil fuels and global deforestation, which both release CO2. Now global deforestation also contributes to higher CO2 levels because burning trees release CO2 and because trees are no longer present to absorb CO2 through photosynthesis. The Kyoto Protocol of 1997 is an international agreement for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. And from the chart that I've shown before, the national emissions of, pollu of pollutants, this is the percent from 1970 emissions of four main pollutants. So the question is, what does the increase in emissions of nitrogen oxi oxides since 1970 tell you? By looking at each graph, you can see how it has changed from 1970 until 1998. This concludes Chapter 17. This is one opportunity for you to look at section review questions from all four sections. If you've done so up until now, all you have left is 17.4, 1 through 6. If you have any questions or would like more study cues, or study habits or study ideas, please contact your teacher. As a quick overview, I'd like to show you a brief outline of what we talked about in Chapter 17. The first section was the atmosphere imbalance. We looked at the composition of the atmosphere, recycling of atmospheric materials, and we looked at the balance. Section 2, heat in the atmosphere, how heat moves, heat versus temperature, structure of the atmosphere, insulation in the atmosphere. We also looked at the heat budget of Earth and the atmosphere. Section number three, we looked at local temperature variations, the intensity of insulation, and what the factors are that influence it, heating of water and land, and temperature maps. In the final section, we looked at human impact on the atmosphere, looked at common air pollutants, described acid rain, smog, ozone depletion, and described global warming.